Patriots. So this segment is going to be talking about a sensitive topic, and that topic is sexual harassment. You may not know that one in five women, or 18%, are raped at some point in their life. And you may also not know that more than half of women report being sexually assaulted by their intimate partner. Most female victims, about 79%, have reported their first rape before age 25. Now that you have the numbers in mind, you may be thinking, well, what do I do if this ever happens to myself or loved ones? I have the answer. I have taken the time to interview two women and their work has given them experience with sexual assault victims and survivors, and they can provide a safe space for anyone who has ever experienced sexual assault and wants to speak up and take action. Christina Jimenez is up first and Riley Hillman is right after. Their information will be at the end of this video for anyone who needs it. I'm just going to give you a little background on kind of what the documentary slash segment is for the high school. So I had the idea about bringing awareness about sexual assault and sexual abuse to students because in my eyes it's really important and I feel that every student sh student should know what to do if this is happening to them or someone that they know. So what is your name and your title for your job? Um, my name is Christina Jimenez and I am the Outreach Services Director for Project Sister Family Services. Uh, how long have you been working there? I have been with the agency for a total of nine years. I started off as a volunteer for two years on their 24-hour hotline, um, providing you know services to survivors. And then I um, started to work with them full time in the prevention and the education department. As a minor, do you think that there are certain signs to look out for, for like an adult? So as a minor, if I was like thinking like, oh, that kind of is weird, like as an adult figure, what would be like some signs that would be that? Some of the things that I think that you, as, as minors, to keep in mind is if you notice that someone that is a lot older than you, um, definitely out of your age group that is showing a lot of interest in you, um, is something to kind of be aware of. Someone that may be um, grooming you, trying to find out what are your likes, what are your dislikes, trying to kind of befriend you and kind of constantly out, I like all the things that you like, um, maybe buying you gifts, um, trying to really push boundaries also, like if you feel uncomfortable with something, but they're trying to minimize it, say it's not a big deal. Those are things I think to keep in mind and to look out for. Um, it is probably the biggest thing or someone that's trying to have a secret relationship with you. Um, you know, this is a secret. We shouldn't tell anybody. Keep keep this to ourselves. Um, it, those are those are usually signs that we see with with minors, especially with younger children. Um, but with I think adolescents, teenagers your age, I would say it's more of that someone that's showing interest in me that may not be within my age group that you know probably has no business having an interest in me. So you mentioned grooming. Would you mind elaborating on kind of what that is for people who don't know? So grooming is when someone is kind of trying to um, manipulate you to adapt to a situation. They're going to see how far can I really push the boundaries or the comfort level with this individual. Uh, so from your point of view and everything that you have seen over the years, are the patterns always the same or does it vary? Every case is different, right? right. Um, every survivor will respond differently. Every survivor's story is different, but there are similarities. The similarities of dismissing an individual's feelings um, or emotions. Um, sometimes there will be threats. Sometimes it's just the manipulation right, of tricking someone to do something. Um, but I think at the end of the line, it's always someone that is in a position of power or authority over the individual. Um, it can even be the same age, right? But there's still some type of differential power, whether it would be physically seen or perceived, um, a power differentiation. And that person that is in a position of power is exerting kind of violence and control over the other. So if a person feels like something isn't right or something's wrong or they feel like something's happened to them, what is the first thing that they should do? Who should they call? Just call the local rape crisis center, call a hotline that they can get support and services from. Sometimes it's talking to a complete stranger about how you're feeling is a lot more 
um, comforting than talking to someone that you look up to or that you trust because you don't want to be judged. But I think the number one thing is to speak up and say, hey, this is something that happened to me and I feel uncomfortable. So I think just having the, the courage to, to speak to someone. What are some coping mechanism, mechanisms that you would recommend? Um, everyone is going to respond differently when we talk about sexual violence. And so there's not a, a, a one answer fits all. Um, so I'm glad you asked for multiple ones. But I would say differently, um, journaling, talking about, you know, writing down how you're feeling, what your thoughts are. Journaling is really helpful. Um, sometimes even just um, seeking support groups, getting involved. Um, everyone is different. Some people like to go out and work out, go out for a run, you know, clear their mind, meditate. Um, but I think the number one thing is to just remember that this wasn't your fault. Um, and a coping way is to, again, have those conversations with folks, open up, share your story. Um, but most importantly, make sure that you're seeking support for healing with counseling. Um, so let's say hypothetically that I have a friend and I'm starting to notice that some things are wrong or some things are a little bit different. What signs should I look out for? Um, I think drastic behavioral changes in your friend. Maybe if your friend um, was someone that was very outgoing, very um, talkative, a scholar, and now kind of doesn't care about their education, doesn't care about talking to people or engaging with others. Those are signs of drastic behavioral change in character and socialization, um, or whether your friend is very introverted, very quiet, very like shy person, and is now kind of really outgoing and taking a lot of risks and chances in their behavior. I think those are things to keep an eye on. So once again, from your perspective, how long can this process last? How long can the healing process last? So the healing process is very different for each individual. Um, I can't tell you that it's going to be resolved in a matter of weeks or months. Um, for some, it may be years. Um, but I think on average, it would probably be for the immediate trauma, um, probably about a year from the moment that someone comes forward and feels comfortable to report to all of that, um, to really be in a place where they feel like they are um, mentally and physically safe. It could be up to a year. Is there something else that you feel should be said that I didn't cover? Is there anything that you would like to add? You are not alone. There are agencies, there's organizations, there's people out there to help you and support you. And it wasn't your fault. It never is your fault. It never was your fault. And it's never too late to heal. I think that's just the most important thing. And to be supportive, if someone were to come to you and share with you, you know, do not pass judgment, share with them resources and comfort. Believe them. I think it's the hardest thing for someone to come forward and share. I'm glad that you said that because I feel like people think that it's their fault when in reality it's not. Okay, so first and foremost, thank you for letting me interview you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, so what is your name and title? So kind of for your job? Yeah, of course. So my name is Riley Hillman and I am the prevention coordinator at the Riverside Area Rape Crisis Center. Uh, how long have you been working there? So I've been working in this position for about a year, but I was a volunteer with the agency before that for another year. So I've been here about two years. Kind of jumping straight into it. Um, this is sort of a documentary type deal to sort of not highlight, but bring awareness about sexual assault to a person and just things that other people can do. So yeah, would you know any signs that a person can look out for? Like if it's appropriate versus if it's not appropriate. Our responses to trauma are varied and there's really no like oh this is normally what happens because anything can happen a lot of the times though we might see fear of a certain person or a situation so maybe if it was their significant other or a family member they might be more hesitant to be around that person or if it happened at a like an event so like a birthday party or something like that they might not like those types of events but 
when we're talking about like the different types of emotions or behaviors that you might see, it really does depend on the individual person. So I don't want to say like, oh, this is what you'll see because sometimes you might not see that. Right. That kind of led me to my next question, which would be, are the patterns all the same? But I think you just kind of answered that. So that would be no, the patterns aren't all the same. It just varies with everyone. Yeah. So, and that's one of the really big misconceptions about sexual assault or abuse, but also trauma in general, is that there really is no, well, this is typically kind of how people behave because it's different. Some people are going to have different coping mechanisms. They're going to have different ways of expressing things. So yeah, no, there's no really normal way that somebody will react to something like that. So when talking about this whole situation is there a correct term such as like abuse or assault or is it just one of the other when we're talking about those terms sexual abuse is really the more blanket general term and then sexual assault describes the actions so their sexual abuse can encompass a lot more than sexual assault so it's kind of like the the square and the rectangle. So all sexual assault is sexual abuse, but not all sexual abuse is sexual assault. So we want to really just kind of know that difference. And when we're talking about sexual assault too, people think, well, it's rape. It's that uh, penile vaginal penetration when it's a lot more than that. So if a person were to feel like something is not right, is there just one number to call or who should they call such as your organization or the police? Like what should someone do if it were to happen? So if the assault happened to them? Yes. So there's a, a lot of different options here. So if they're interested in reporting it to the police department, so then it would go on record, there would be a case open and all that stuff, they can call the police department. If it happened within five days, so let's say the assault occurred on a Sunday and it's Tuesday. If they call the police department and explain what happened, they're gonna go to the hospital to get an exam done. And it's called a SART exam. And this is just kind of an exam to gather evidence. So they'll examine um, the body, your private areas, take pictures, things like that. And what they're doing is they're trying to collect evidence to use later. But people don't always want to report what happened. And in that case, they can just call a rape crisis center or really any other type of hotline if they wanna get support. Um, hotlines, you can call for immediate support, if you're kind of feeling emotional, we can help de-escalate you. Or if you want more access to resources, you can also call the hotlines as well. When we're talking about like rape crisis centers and like specifically, there's a rape crisis center in every county within California. So, or if you Google or if you call any rape crisis center, so let's say you call ours, Riverside Area Rape Crisis Center, but you're in LA we can give you the number for the LA Rape Crisis Center or San Diego or all the way up in Sacramento because we have those resources to give to our survivors and people who call in as well. So as a crisis center, you guys don't make reports, you don't call the police, you're just there to help the person who called? Exactly. So yeah, we don't, the only time we have to report something is if it's child abuse or elder abuse. So if we learn that it is a child under 18 who is calling and disclosing this to us, we do have to make a report to CPS. But if it's somebody over 18 and they're explaining that this happened to us, we're there to just really tell them, well, these are your options. What do you wanna do? If they do wanna report, we can go with them. So, well, in normal times and non-COVID times, we can go to the police stations to report it. We can go to the police interviews we can go to the hospital for the, um, the medical exam that's done and just be that support person for them. And then if the case ever does go to court, we can also go to court with them. Let's hypothetically say that I'm a friend of someone and I start to notice something's going on with one of my friends. What would those signs be that would make an alarm in my head that's saying 
something is wrong. So what are the signs that I should look out for? Yeah, so like I was saying in the beginning, those signs are gonna vary depending on the person. Um, I feel like a, a telltale sign though is if they start talking about these topics when they didn't really talk about it before. Or if they just flat out disclose to you like, oh, this, this happened to me. And sometimes people don't have the knowledge or the language to express what happened. So they might not know that they were sexually assaulted. So if they say things like, oh yeah, well we had sex, but I didn't really want to, that's not consensual, which means it is sexual assault. So if they start saying things like that, that's definitely like, oh, well maybe something happened to you. And if you don't really know, you're kind of confused and you don't want to talk to them because you know, you're not sure, you don't want to trigger them, you can also call our hotline. So our hotline's open to loved ones, family, friends, everything like that. If you want information, you can call and be like, hey, like, I think my friend was assaulted, but I don't really know. And I don't know how to support them. Can you help me? And we can give you tools and tips for that as well. I think that's great that you're, you're, you guys have this sort of organization and that it's available to everyone. And then confidentiality is such a big thing because people are scared and it's just, it's a healing process. So I think mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah. And especially if, because the majority of perpetrators, so whoever is um, the assailant, it's most often somebody that we know. So 70% of the time, it's somebody that you know, whether it's family, friend, acquaintance, partner. And so when you're receiving services with us, you don't necessarily want that person to know that maybe you've told somebody because you might be afraid of retaliation. So even if they call and ask, oh, is my wife getting services with you? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. Unless you tell us, yes, you are allowed to tell this person. So like some people, it's, you can tell my mom if she calls in. I, that is all that I have. And I really appreciate you letting me interview you. Yeah, of course. I appreciate you reaching out because the more we can get our services out there, it's just, I think everybody should know about it. And I'll even say when I moved down to Riverside, I had no clue that places like this existed. And it's really amazing that some of the work that all rape crisis centers do, because all rape crisis centers are, have the same structure. So that free services, confidentiality and everything like that. So.